Hello everyone, my name is Mark. Welcome to my Calc 3 videos. And today, we're going to talk about maximum problems again, but this time, absolute extrema. So, local versus absolute, or aka relative versus global, they're the same idea, right? Let's use this example as a volcano, right? I have a volcano with a lava pool at the center, it's concaving up, right? Imagine something like this. Right, it's a volcano, and it's concaving up. Where can we find the minimum height? Right, where can we find the minimum height using the second derivative test? Right, so if you use the second derivative test, right, so right, where's the critical point? Right, I mean, assuming this doesn't really, we we're not counting this part, okay? This is not a minimum, right? So if we if we find using the second derivative test, we can find at around this location right the 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 rate of change will be zero right so this way we can find the local minimum of the of the of the volcano but can we go even lower than the point that we have just found right if we walk around the volcano or walk around the mountain right we can go lower, right? Obviously, we can go lower, right? We can go right here, right? This is lower than here. I think you can agree with me on that, right? Um, so is this blue point local or absolute minima, right? It's a local, right? It's 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 the minima. It's a it's a local minima. Local is means relative to its local region, right? This is what the meaning of local extrema, right? versus absolute right so yes let's say this is the base of the mountain the bottom of the mountain right this green point is going to be the absolute right or hence the global meaning right the global which the function is defined right um the the, the minimum i hope this i i hope that uh, using the volcano as a as a as an idea um, as the instrat uh, helps you understanding conceptually the difference between local and absolute, right? Local is local with respect to a uh, local region, right? That's what the blue point point is referencing, right? It's it's local to the volcano pool, like it, it's local to, relative to the lava pool, but the green, but the green point, right? Let's say the entire mountain, the green is the entire mountain, which is the entire domain the function is defined so that's the meaning so what if what if we focus all uh, right so that um what if we focus our domain within the volcano rim right if we focus our domain within the volcano rim then the blue point move is um will be the same as the green point right so now in, instead of defining the function exists across the entire mountain now we're defining this function just within the volcano rim, right? So these points are already outside of the bounds, outside of bounds, outside of my consideration. Then in that case, the blue point and green point would coincide. So finally, what is the key dif um, well, uh, what is the key difference between a local and relative or absolute global extrema, right? I think I already mentioned that in the previous video, which is, if it's a local extrema, then the function is defined on our, our real number, on the whole real number domain. But whereas an absolute extrema, where there will always be a constraint given. Okay, that's what it means. That's the difference between uh, local and absolute extrema. So, I hope this I hope this volcano example gives you enough thoughts on what they are. So, finding the vocal versus absolute extrema, right? Um, where in the function do we need to test in order to find the absolute global extrema for single variable function, right? So let's just say I have a function, single variable, right? And then it's uh, defined between here 
and here, right? So where are, where are the key areas that we need to test for our, uh, that we need to test in order to find this extrema, right? I hope you remember from your Calc 1 and Calc 2 is all CPs and endpoints Okay, all CPs and endpoints. Okay, and that is the same thing for multivariable functions. So multivariable function, instead of its uh, endpoints, now it's n boundary. So now you can see this problem start to get a little bit large. Instead of just two points that we can test, now it's how many boundaries, how many boundaries we, uh, it's not just the critical points on each boundary, but also the endpoints on each boundary, as well as the critical points inside the region, right? Inside the region that is defined. So, right, so now we have talked about both local and absolute extrema. You can see there is a quite a bit of similarity between the approaches, right? So. Local extrema, we use second derivative test for single and multivariable functions. And for absolute extrema, we use the idea of, um, we use the uh, concept of critical points and endpoints, which is AKA the first derivative test, right? So uh, local is second, right? So I'll call them SDT, SDT, second derivative test, and then first derivative test, for local and absolute extrema. So, with that said, let's go ahead and start solving a question. So, let's go ahead and set up. Let's go ahead and set it up. So, uh, so this is gonna be, um, so this is, let's go ahead and take a read the problem, right? The absolute minimum of the function in the triangular region with vertices 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1 is equal to 0, its absolute maximum equals 2. So, I think everybody can agree with me that this is an absolute extrema problem by just reading off the question, right? We have absolute minimum, absolute at maximum, right? Um, but not only that, right? This question is telling us, it's given us a region, right? It's a region... Um, and it's a, the function is defined within a region rather than the whole real numbers. So this is the maximum problems, absolute extrema, because first of all, the prompt tells you it's an absolute minimum, absolute maximum, but also they gave you a constraint. They gave you a constraint. So this is, so don't start, don't think about the second derivative test. Now you start thinking about first derivative test because it's an absolute extrema problem. So to solve this problem, the first step is going to find the equation of the bounds. So drawing the region will help, okay? So let's go ahead and draw the region out. Okay, so we have vertices of um, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1. So this, this region is our where the function is defined. So we have, so um, I'm also going to write it. Um, so zero, one, one. So this line is y equals to one minus x or x equals to one minus y. And then this line, the bottom line is y equals to zero, x equals to x, or in terms of how the variable should be preserved, or I'll just call them y equals zero. How about that? and then x equal to zero. So first step, easy enough. Second step, we're going to find partial x, partial y, and then find the critical points. Um, uh, usually, I mean, or, or D and E, right? So you make sure they lie inside the bounds, right? If it's outside of the bounds, we're not going to consider them because it's useless. It, it doesn't fit our problem. So, step two, 
All right, so we have a function of x squared plus y squared plus 5xy. Right, fx will be 2x plus 5y, fy equals to 2y plus 5x. So step two, and then um, and then we're going to find the values of the CPs inside the boundary. Um, so, uh, never mind. So, actually, I should, I mean, I think that we should be combining these two together. Um, so, so, uh, okay, there you go. Mm, we don't need this. Yeah, sorry. Sorry for this quick corrections. Mm. Oh, never mind. Never mind. That, that's correct. That is actually correct. Um, I was not mistaken. So, um, so, so that's step two. And then we also need to um, uh, find the <clears throat> find the critical points. So, um, f x equals to zero um that means um x equals to zero um and since we know um that um <clears throat> x equals f equals to zero that also means um, f y equals to zero that tells us um Um, how do you say it? So hold on a second. Um, y equals to zero, right? So if this expression has to be zero, then this those, both terms has to be zero, and then that's the same idea for the fy. So x equals to zero, y equals to zero. Therefore, the critical point is zero zero, um, quote unquote, inside the boundary. But that's what we got from using the finding uh, finding the critical te critical points. So. We're going to also evaluate the the values at the critical points inside the boundary. So, function of x zero zero equals to mm, zero, right? Because zero squared plus zero squared plus five times zero times zero gives us zero. So, um, step four. What we're gonna call is now we have finished finding the values of the critical points inside the boundary. Now we're gonna turn turn attention to the boundaries themselves. So what I call is we're going to stop the boundary lines into the function to reduce the f of x y to f y only or f x only. So so that we can perf uh, continue to do the math on it. So um, step four. So, uh, so the first boundary, boundary number one, x equals to zero. So that means y is going to remain as y. That means we will end up getting um, um, f going to be y2, right? So we're going to sub substitute them into the original function expression. And then boundary number two, we're going to go ahead and duplicate that and then duplicate that right I want to go ahead and go back to this graph itself right I want you to when, when I when I was when I'm substituting them um, I was substituting um, this one in so now I'm going to substitute this one so it's up to y equals zero for the second All right y equals zero x remains as x f equals to x squared so Easy enough, and then the third one is y equals to one minus x. That that slanted line. So what we're gonna have is f equals to um, x squared plus one minus x. Right, that's the value of y now plus five x, and the y is one minus x. So we're gonna end up with x squared plus one minus two x plus x squared plus five x minus x squared five. We're missing a five right here. So this will end up being 
minus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. Okay. Boom. Uh, 5. So the step 5 is going to be find the values of the function on the boundary lines, including critical points as well as the end points okay, of the boundary line. So you can see the workload is starting to get a little bit tense, intense um, for these types of problems. It's going to be a lot of things that we're going to try to find and evaluate. But it is doable. So boundary 1, right, so we're going to have, let's go ahead and start finding the CP first. So F prime is going to be, um, F prime is going to be um, 2y, right? And then this critical points, that means it's going to be y equals to 0. That also means x is going to be 0. Um, well, that's what we have to find, right? So that means f0 equals to 0, right? Like we're substituting back here. So boundary 2. Oh, not actually, never mind. End points. So f0 equals to 0, right? So remember, it's a triangle that has the um, the shorter legs. A right triangle has a shorter leg, as, uh, has a length of 1. So our lower bound is 0, and our upper bound is 1, right? So 0, 1. 0, 1, same thing as same thing as the next next set of boundary. So therefore, that's how we got to the critical points as well as, well as the endpoints. So boundary number two, right? Boundary number two. F prime equals to two x, right? So we have right x squared. So two x cp. Right? It's the same story. It's the same story, right? So it's a y equals 0, x equals 0. And in the end points, it's also the same. So, right, it's now it because the, again, left round, but lower bound and upper bound are the same compared to the other one. And then last one is boundary number 3. So this one's a bit interesting. Uh, though it's always the interesting one. Uh, we're going to have... Um, f prime equals to um, f prime equals to negative 6 x plus 3 right we're deriving it from here the expression of f on the boundary number boundary number 3 uh, so the CP is uh, x equals to 1 over 2 y so that means because remember y equals to 1 minus x, so that means y equals to uh, 1 over 2. Um, so, so that means our plugging in right here, um, f of 1 over 2 is 7 over 4. And then endpoints, uh, so again, it's uh, 0 and 1, so f 0 equals to 1 and then f1 equals to 1 so if you plug in those those values um, into the equation right here uh, so why I get a, why I get the 0 and 1 from right if you think about this equation the domain of x is still from 0 to 1 so the um, that's why we can came up with the bounds of the the bounds of the slanted line. So that's step five. Uh, it was um, quite a, quite a big step, but it had to be done uh, for the sake of completeness. So we're gonna repeat the step for four and five for each boundary line. So we have re we have just finished that. And then step seven is we're going to collect all values of the critical points and endpoints inside the boundary on the boundary, and then to determine the absolute extrema. So, um, so step seven, uh, the CP. So let's start with critical point inside the boundary. Right. 
Technically, we had a CP of 0, 0, but if you pay attention, right, this is actually on the boundary line. So we're, we're just going to call it none, right? And then we're going to have boundary number one, number two, and number three, right? They all have their own endpoints, and they all do have their own critical, point, uh, critical points. So we're going to call this um, um, endpoints, I'll call them ends. Then CP. So so for the first first one we have zero and one, right? So right here, and then I'll, and I also have a critical point value of zero. Uh, and then this, it's the same thing for the other one for boundary number two one zero, and then the last one, right? We're going to have uh, one 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 and then seven over four. Right, so now we know that compared compared to all of the critical values, critical points, and the endpoints, now we know that this value is the absolute max maximum. Right, so the correct answer for this problem will be C, seven and over four. So. Yeah, it is quite a long problem. I am not gonna lie. Um, it's not a, It's not always the best. <laughs> it's not always the best time when you run into a absolutely extreme of problems on an exam. But this is. But it is. It has its own structures, right? As I have demonstrated, there are certain formula or certain solving process you can follow to guarantee you are arriving the correct to the correct answer. So, um, right, we, we start with finding the critical points inside the boundary, and we find the endpoints and the critical points on the boundary through the idea of substitution. And then, we, and then we do that for each boundary, and then we can connect all of these critical points and endpoints together to compare um, to find the absolute extrema inside the domain. So, that's all I have for um, in this uh, section. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you learned something. I hope you can memorize the process. And I will see you in the next video.